morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Gobel back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. We are in Proverbs today. I know. Like, how did we get there? Well, I guess it's fairly simple. We're reading about King Hezekiah, who's king of Judah in Jerusalem, who brought back religious reforms or turned the heart of the people back to Yahweh, their God. And he collected Proverbs of Solomon. We read some of them yesterday. We're going to read the rest of them today. Well, we're going to read one of them. Well, we're going to read one of them. And then, of course, we have King Lemuel, which is Proverbs 31. And it, I, I, don't have, I don't have much said about it. Like, where does it fit in? When does it fit in? Who is King Lemuel? I don't know if I know exactly. But they were Proverbs of Solomon that King Hezekiah collected. That's what we're going with. That's why they're here. So whether how accurate it is or not, well, you know, it's, it's in the, it's in the works. I guess it's, maybe it's close enough. Maybe it's close enough and that's good enough. I don't know. Cause, but we know that he did collect, um, that King Hezekiah collected Proverbs of Solomon. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. All right. Proverbs 30, verses one, verse 1 <laughs> through the end of the book. And I think it's going to be a quick one because it's only two chapters. Uh, reading out of the World English Bible translation. All right. Verse 1. The words of Agur, the son of Jacke, the revelation. The man says to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Ukal, surely I am the most ignorant man and don't have a man's understanding. I have not learned wisdom, neither do I have the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended up into heaven and descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if you know? Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Don't you add to his words, lest he reprove you and you be found a liar. Two things I have asked of you. Don't deny me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Lest I be full, deny you and say, who is Yahweh? Or lest I be poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Don't slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be held guilty. There is a generation that curses their father and doesn't bless their mother. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes, yet are not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. Their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords and their jaws like knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters. Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that don't say enough. Sheol, or the grave, also translated as the grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and the fire that doesn't say enough. The eye that mocks at his father and scorns obedience to his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out. The young eagles shall eat it. There are three things that are, which are too amazing for me, four which I don't understand. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the middle of the sea, and the way of a man with a maiden. So is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done nothing wrong. For three things the earth trembles, and under four it can't bear up. For a servant when he is king, a fool when he is filled with food, for an unloved woman when she is married, and a servant who is heir to her mistress. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are not a strong people, yet they provide their food in the summer. The hyraxes are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they advance in ranks. You can catch a lizard with your hands, yet it is in king's palaces. There are three things which are stately in their march, four which are stately in going. The lion, which is mightiest among animals and doesn't turn away from any. The greyhound, the male goat, and the king against whom there is no rising up. If you have done foolishly in lifting up yourself, or if you have thought evil, put your hand over your mouth. For as the churning of milk produces butter, and the wringing of the nose produces blood, so the forcing of wrath produces strife. 
I got to touch on, I got to, we got to talk about one of these things, right? This thing right here, two things I have asked of you, don't deny me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lies. You know, you hear that and you're like, yeah, yeah, I think that's right. You know, eventually you, you get to the point where you want people to tell you the truth, right? And you want them to tell you what's really going on. You don't want to be flattered. You don't want them to tell you something great about yourself that you, that's not true or that you don't want them to come up and say, oh yeah, you're really good at that. Or, or you're really good at this. Or you, you, you stop caring about like your feelings, I guess. And you just want to know what's real. You're like, well, what am I good at? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Uh, was I not good at this? Was I not good at that? Do you like me? Do you not like me? You know, you just want you just want real. You want honesty. You want transparency. You want depth of relationship. You don't want uh, superficial I don't know, people telling you what you want to hear just to hear it, which is good. You I mean, you, you can get that. So remove far from me falsehood and lies. Got it. But then this one, right? Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Some translations have or that is allotted to me. Kind of saying, okay, God is hashed out this much I'll take it lest I be full and deny you like because that's what happens when we start getting too big for our britches or when we start getting wealth or accumulating wealth or so I've heard <laughs> the lest I be full deny you and say who is Yahweh like, I don't need God I don't need you and that's what we've seen here is we're reading the Bible in chronological order that's what we've seen who is Yahweh I don't need God or lest I be poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. He wants that middle ground. And I, I mean, I don't really don't think of it. I pray this. I pray this. And I try to get myself to feel it. But there's always this little dark crevice of my soul that's like, eh, I'll try riches. Just give me a shot. Give me a shot. I'll prove it wrong. I'll take care of it. <laughs> I won't deny you. Kind of like Peter, right? He's like, I'll never deny. I'll never deny you. And then, you know, denies him three times, right? It's like, we want our shot. We want to get the chance. I want to give, I, I want my chance at being rich and powerful. See if I can do a good job. Regardless of like this whole uh, testimony of witnesses against it being like, no, that's the path of destruction. You don't want to go down that path. We're like, well, I'll give it a shot. Give me a chance. Let me see what I can do with it. But so this is tough. At least for me, it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's easy for you. I don't know. But this is tough for me where it's like, but the, the mindset is I'll take what God gives me so that he might be glorified. So I don't forget him and that I don't lie and defame him. All right. Proverbs 31, one, the words of King Lemuel, the revelation, which his mother taught him. So this is mom teaching son about what kind of woman to look for. Oh, my son, oh, son of my womb, oh, son of my vows, don't give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to say, where is strong drink? Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice due to anyone who is afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is ready to perish and wine to the bitter in soul. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the mute in the cause of all who are left desolate. Open your mouth, judge righteously and serve justice to the poor and needy. It's kind of like, this whole concept of the, the higher you rise in rank and privilege and authority and power and influence, the higher your moral character needs to rise. The more perfect you need to be, the more moral you need to be. And when it's opposite, it causes groaning and suffering amongst the people. So you, you're not supposed to use your wealth. You're not supposed to use your fame. You're not supposed to use your position to get drunk and party and hook up with a bunch of chicks and chase after women because you're supposed to be about dispensing justice and serving and helping and judging righteously, serving justice to the poor and needy. Picking up in verse 10, who can find a worthy woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband trusts her. 
he shall have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works eagerly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her bread from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, gives food to her household and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands she plants a vineyard. She arms her waist with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp doesn't go out by night. She lays her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her arms to the poor. Yes, she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes for herself carpets of tapestry. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing. She laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with, with, with wisdom. Kind instruction is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Let her works praise her in the gates. Um, charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting is another translation, but a woman who fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. It's kind of like the, you're the spirit, right? You're supposed to be looking, um, deeper, right? Than just, just skin deep. That's kind of right. That's what we say. Oh, you want some, you want to look at the inner, the inner beauty. You want to look for someone's inner beauty. And what does that look like? Well, it's character. It's fearing, fearing God. And what is, what does it mean to fear Yahweh? We've talked about this a lot, but it is to have a right view of who God is and who we are and the nature of the relationship between creator and creature that has been compromised and that, um, we need to get back to God. And there's only one way to do that. And that is through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, so, the person and the work of Christ. Anywho, I don't have anybody to, I don't have any prayer requests at the moment and it's a quick reading today. So let's go ahead and get to praying and, and get on out of here get you out of here early today. And then we'll get back after it tomorrow. I think it's another quick reading tomorrow. So again, if you're driving, operating heavy machinery, whatever you're doing, if you got to pay attention, keep your eyes open, pay attention to it. If not, close your eyes and you can pray with us, bow the knee, whatever you want to do. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your kindness and mercy in preserving these writings for us. We thank you that Hezekiah uh, sought out wisdom, uh, sought the wisdom of others and wasn't too proud and arrogant as a king to say, well, I don't need anybody else's wisdom. I'm going to go seek the wisdom of Solomon and seek the wisdom of God. And you did that. You sustained it for us and you provided it for us. And I pray that we would receive it the way you intend it to us, instruct us the, or be instructed the way that you intended it to be. Give us grace to not eat the bread of idleness. Um, we don't want to be just sitting around doing nothing. We want to put our hands to the task. We want to be content with what we have. And we look to you and ask for neither poverty nor riches. Feed us with the food allotted to us. Give us that which is allotted to us. And I pray that we would be content. Pray for contentment for us. That we would not be given over to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that we would not pursue those things. We would not give our strength to those things. But instead, that we would give our strength to serving you and serving uh, or glorifying you and serving our fellow, um, our fellow man. And we pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, y'all. Um, show notes, notmanynoble.com. Prayer requests, hit me up, notmanynoble at gmail.com. You can hit, send me an email. Love to hear from you. Or whether you just want to say, what's up? And just give me a shout out or just check in. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. And we will, uh, or I'll catch you tomorrow.